you ever heard the saying, do the right thing the wrong way? That's what this video is gonna be all about. It's been about a month since I put together a video for the 64 Comet, but that is all gonna change. I'm gonna have about five videos coming out in pretty rapid succession here to catch you up with where I am at. But this first video is gonna be specifically about what happened when I removed my cylinder heads, went ahead and installed that cam that you saw in the last video and started checking piston to valve clearance. So we're doing the right thing, which is checking piston to valve clearance. And in this video specifically, we are gonna talk about a couple different methods to check piston to valve clearance, the clang method, um, and also using checker springs. And then we're gonna talk about what happens if you don't get the result that you're looking for, meaning you don't have enough clearance either on the intake or the exhaust side. We're gonna talk about how you can change the timing of your camshaft with an adjustable crank sprocket to either advance or retard the cam timing, which will have an effect on piston to valve clearance. And finally, if that doesn't work, I'm going to show you guys, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna work. I am gonna show you guys how at home, and this is a disclaimer, I'm not saying that you should run out and do this, but I'm gonna give you an option for how to fly cut pistons at home with little to no tools. Let's dive into the video. Okay, just in case it's not crystal clear, what I'm doing right here, claying the piston, is I take a piece of Play-Doh, I put it on top of the piston, then I install the head. Then you're gonna see me make sure that I put on the right rocker arms, lifters, push rods, all of that stuff, and then bar the engine over a handful of times. What's gonna happen is the intake valves are gonna open and close, same with the exhaust, leaving an imprint in the clay. You can remove the clay and measure the thickness, and that gives you your clearance from the top of the piston to the valve. Essentially, I, I, I clayed it another time, because the, the first time I did it, I couldn't get a good intake, or good reading on the intake. I got a really good one on the exhaust. Clayed it a second time. Um, that one I couldn't get any reading because it peeled off. I'm gonna go ahead and do it a third time, but this time I'm gonna adjust the cam timing because I've got like 138 thousandths on the exhaust, which is more than enough, um, but I need more on the intake side. That is pretty clear. So you want, I think like 80 thousandths on the intake and like 100 thousandths on the exhaust. You retarded the cam, um, put it on the different sprocket, made sure to line up the dot and the new dot right there. We'll put the clay back on. We'll roll it back over. What this is gonna do is in theory, it should give us more clearance on the intake side. It should also ever so slightly tip the curve towards the higher RPM range. So if this works, it's actually a win-win because this is a stick shift car. We've got single plane intake and all that stuff. And we want it to make that power number that we want up higher, even with this small cam. So if this works, this is really gonna be our best shot at making the power that we want. So I went ahead and did that and found out I don't have enough clearance. So even with adjusting the cam timing, it just wasn't going to work. Now, the right thing to do, I talked about doing earlier, I say doing the right thing the wrong way. The right thing at this point, if money and time was no object, honestly, go ahead, get yourself some pistons with reliefs already cut in them. If you don't feel like doing that, probably the second best thing is to contact a company that sells a piston fly cutting tool and you can cut them with it in the car. But the caveat to that, as you'll see here in a little bit, is you need to have the right head set up depending on your valve size. If you're not increasing the valve size, then hey, you know, this is pretty easy to do, but I was and I don't have a spare brand new head that I wanna go and use for this. So what I'm gonna show you is how I went and purchased like a couple of washers from Ace Hardware, even from Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Get yourself some sandpaper, get yourself a drill, some basic other things, some little adjustable collets. And I came up with a way to fly cut the pistons or grind the pistons for valve reliefs inside the car. So we'll hop over to that, I'll show you what I did. And hey, you know what? If you've got an old vehicle and you're pretty adventurous, this may actually work for you. So let's dive into that and let me know what you think. Because I measured this washer, it's about 86 thousandths and I'm gonna use that to set my height. And what I mean by that is, um, like for example, this one's kind of not on there yet, but I'm gonna set these on either side here and then drop it on there. And this is gonna be like my positive stop for all of them. And I'm gonna use my washers as sort of a positive stop. So I know how far I need to drop this down. Kind of like a little clamshell here, okay? So I know I'm touching, 
You know, I'm against the washers. Go ahead, tighten this down, and I can take my washers out. I've got 86 thousandths of clearance right there. I can still bring it back up, but it's not gonna touch, okay? Now I'm good to start grinding. And what we wanna play close attention to is this gap right here, because that's what's gonna be our stop. Okay, you get the idea. So we can see now that our positive stop is right on top of there. You can kind of hear the difference, right? So it's not an exact science, but we're learning. So what we'll do now is I don't want to adjust this. We'll take the head off. You can always take off more, but you can't take off less. So we'll go ahead, take the head off, take some measurements, see where we're at. If you have questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. Um, I'm not going to show you each and every time I do this. Just a couple tips I will say. You got to be really careful whether you use tape or grease or whatever. You really want to minimize any sort of shavings getting down into the engine. I don't really show it right here, but I come back and I vacuum a ton to try and get everything out. And that was my biggest worry with this whole thing was just getting any sort of debris in the engine. It's, it's a little bit scary if I'm being honest. Um, also, it would be great if you had a cylinder head that was large enough to fit the oversized valves. We'll talk about that here in a second. So if you're not running bigger valves and um, you just need the clearance for a cam, this actually will work out pretty well. Um, you do have to replace uh, the whatever sort of you know sandpaper, whatever you're using relatively regularly because it you know these are forged pistons stock and uh they they grind decently well but it, it kind of beats up the tape so anyways we'll wrap it up here and i'll go into just a quick talk and kind of tell you my findings okay so the key here is on the exhaust side as you probably saw it worked pretty well and the reason for that is geometry so basically the larger exhaust valve with the new heads is only marginally bigger. And when I made that bigger valve for cutting, um, I could install it into the stock heads and it would fit all the way you know, up top and I could cut everything with the piston at top dead center. When I try to do that with the intake though, the intake, you know, the valve that I made, or if you had a piston fly cutting tool, but you had the old set of heads, unless you totally took the valve seats out and all that stuff, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go all the way into your head with and allow you to cut at top dead center. There's just not enough space. What happens though, when you do that is when you lower the piston down and you try and cut it, yeah, you can cut it, but you're not cutting it at the right location, okay? So I would be lying to you guys if I said I stopped there and I did the right thing. I continued onward, okay? That's kind of the theme of this video is I was trying to do the things the right way, but I did them the wrong way. So I wound up going back and using a tool by hand, a very small, um, grinder with like a two inch disc and I did the intakes. I went back and checked everything with checker springs and basically I don't love what I did, but that's what I did. And now I wound up having the relief that I need for the cam that I have installed. Um, is it the right way to do things? No. Is the way that I did things? Yes. Maybe this provides you with some ideas. In the next video though, we're gonna kind of talk about the next stages of the process. We're gonna start reinstalling everything. I'm gonna talk more about the parts. We're gonna talk about um, some things you have to change when you do this. We're gonna talk about headers, where you have the first start, we're gonna tuning all this stuff. I got plenty of videos coming for you guys, but let me know what you think about what I did. It's a terrible idea. Would you never do it? Am I gonna get eaten alive in the comments? Probably, but you know what? At least I'm out there doing something. So there's a famous saying, don't get it right, just get it running. And right now it's running, but we're gonna show you how we got there in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, let me know what you think. And another video will be dropping soon. I've got a bunch of footage I'm editing and I'm gonna put it all back together and get us caught up to where we are right now. But you will see that next time on Truck and Roll.